Welcome. I'm Jeff Gedman. I'm president and CEO of the Legatum Institute, and we're streaming live worldwide for the next 45 minutes with our special guest, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Welcome. Uh, to our live audience, we'll be taking questions a little bit later, but uh, I'd like to tell you that we're here to discuss first His Holiness's new book, Beyond Religion, Ethics for a Whole World, and a symposium that the Legantan Institute hosts today with the Dalai Lama on the crossroads and intersection between politics, economics, and the moral crisis in the world today. Your Holiness, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Your Holiness, one of the things that emerged uh, in the discussions today, in our roundtable, was your contention that if we are at a political and economic crossroads, that this crossroads is fundamentally ethical in nature. And you have argued that before we start to think about new regulations or new mechanisms or new institutions, the first thing is individual responsibility. That we that's first right. look into ourselves. Can right. you say something about that, please? Uh, all these human or sort of professions, different sort of field, actually carried by human being. So every action uh, goes with motivation. So no matter what the profession, even so religious teaching, or like a doctor is it taking care about other uh, sort of physical well-being, if the motivation is not much sort of, I should say, positive, uh, Suppose the medic, uh, sort of medication is to save others' life, but if the profession, professionist, sort of profession, sort of mind, uh, something different, then sometimes that sort of the profession might damage the other person. Clear. Yeah. So, uh, economy or all these. Suppose serving humanity to create happier society. But sometimes, you see the motivation, I think two sides. One, the lack of sense of, sort of concern about others' well-being. Uh, another, second, or rather I think uh, the most important is a holistic view. A lack of holistic view, then the economy you might get some profit immediately, but bad reputation. And then also, like you said, economic field, exploitations in, in history, and even today. Uh, and then also, in the long run, create rich and poor. And also, you see, damage environment. All these is the problems uh, the person only think about economy, only economy, the lack of holistic view. So we need the holistic view teach us. You have to think more wider perspective. The, everything, the reality, interrelated, interdependent. So when every sort of our actions should keep these two things. First, holistic, then holistic view. Also, you see, uh, bring the realization uh, we should be honest, truthful. Otherwise, sooner or later, one of my, <coughs> not my, I personally do not know. One scientist recently, is so one article, uh, he's sort of, some, some, some scientists, uh, according to their research, they find those people who tell more lies and deep, in, deep insight, much stress. <laughs> so very bad. <laughs> Suppose you're telling a lie, it's gain something. Uh, but holistic view, very bad for health, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Your Holiness, <clears throat> what does that mean practically? 
for people who are working in economics or working in government or working in different spheres of a society because people uh, tend to look for institutional solutions. They oh. tend to look for government solutions. They tend to look for something uh, external. Oh. Uh, what is the right balance and what comes first? I think first, global level, humanitarian level. I think like Copenhagen summit about ecology fail to produce concrete sort of guidance because the concerned leaders, they consider, I mean, they, they take top priority in their own national interest rather than global interest. So nations, also part of the world, if global level some pro problems happen, like a warming, global le level, this eventually every nation suffer. So of course, uh, uh, for example, our own sort of daily food, no need to think about the global thing. <laughs> it's just it's just satisfaction or suitable for your health. That's all. So this sort of one family, I think family, even the family business also, I, I feel the, the promotion of human uh, honest or human honesty, values, compassionate sort of feeling. Uh, first, from where you start? From individual, from family level. Uh, this, I think, the promotion of human value, warm heartedness, or sense of concern of others' well being. A government or some NGOs. This education sort of connected sort of uh, some some organization. Of course, they can do, but uh, but ultimately, the individual should read, should sort of cultivate or nurture these our inner value, and then share with your neighbor. Through that way, after all, community or seven billion humanity means combination of individual. So real change must start from individual. So everyone, each one, have this sort of responsibility, make some contribution. Sometimes you see the problem, huge. Then think oneself, oh, helpless. But that's, I think, wrong. These things, we should start from individual. And that way, and then, uh, you can expect more and more people, more community, through that way, national level or mm. global level. We talked about that this morning in the symposium here at the Legatum Institute, and we talked at some length about how, in many instances, individuals think about freedom and opportunity, but maybe a little bit less about responsibility. My question is this. You um, are a global human being and you travel frequently in and between the developed world, we're in Britain today, mm -hmm. and the developing world. What is it in terms of this dignity and responsibility of the individual, uh, what is it that we can learn from each other? The developed world from the developing world and vice versa. Are there lessons that can be learned? Oh, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I think maybe the Usually, I express in the city, uh, those people in developing countries, uh, if they know the conditions or problems in the other country, then you may uh, feel, oh, you are very fortunate. That may help to, I say, to, to remain your greed in certain certain level. Otherwise, you see, uh, it's a mo more development, more greed, more greed. The reality, sooner or later, the materials or the facilities, material development, in any case, there's a limitation. So it is better dealing with material value, some sense of contentment, with knowing there's limitation. And meantime, the millions of other people in other countries facing even basic necessity, difficult. So starvation, these things there. So remember these things. Then 
you get so satisfaction. Oh, your condition is very good. That help to reduce falsity, greed. Sometimes greed, greed or desire and greed, I think, different. Desire to further develop not only your own sort of interest, but interest of the community and interest of the nation, na nation and interest of the global. I think keep in our mind once individual nation develop. That also is the part of the development of the world or global. Uh, so always we keep in our mind. I feel it is important to keep in our mind first humanity. In order to create happy humanity, first each nation, each community should develop happiness or joyfulness. That combination, material facility, the inner value combined, then uh, family level or individual level, much happier. So I think everything, I think important, you see, we, we have to know, as I mentioned, holistic, everything interdependency. How do we promote a greater appreciation for um, the holistic approach to these things? It seems to me that we are uh, living in a period where uh, individualism is celebrated rightly, but maybe wrongly, because we're in an era of celebrity. It seems to me that we're in an era uh, of hyper-specialization, where we all become, we, we move faster, and we compartmentalize more and more. As you know, Your Holiness, we published something called the Legatum Institute Prosperity Index, which is just that. It's an attempt, like your work, to take a more holistic view beyond GDP, beyond economics alone, mm. of what constitutes a healthy, flourishing, uh, 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 sound society. But it doesn't seem like it's part of the times. The times seem to be narrow, specialized, and the opposite of holistic. How do we promote a more holistic view among politicians, among policymakers, among mm. econo economists? I think global economic crisis and also the ecology problems. It clearly teach us you are not independent, isolated sort of thing. Everything interdependent. Everything is dependent on other. Uh, so in any way, uh, uh, the humanity facing some problem. Now I think here, uh, ultimately I feel the, all these unfair things or unjust things in the economy or political or every, every, every field. I think ultimately, lack of sense of responsibility, <coughs> lack of moral principle. With moral principle, then every human activities can be constructive. So moral principle means uh, thinking the value or interest of the humanity or planet itself. That's the basis of moral principle. I'm not talking about the, let's say, the values according to religious belief. I'm Buddhist. Uh, my own sort of final decision is Buddhahood. <laughs> not reborn on the planet. It's a go <laughs> liberation. <laughs> but this is my personal business. I'm a human being. I have to think. Humanity, human brothers, sisters, about, about it's a seven billion human brothers, sisters, is I have direct sort of what's it, link. Oh. If the seven billion human beings happy, or whole Asian, or whole European happy, or African, otherwise, you see, while uh, you enjoy you see, your meal, your lunch, uh, then often you see, feel, oh, same planet, same human being, same right is it to achieve sort of satisfaction. But then, you see, they are sort of what the livelihood, almost to say, depend on day by day. And today, uh, I got some sort of food. Now, next day, what will happen? These are human beings. You have to remember these things. Uh, these are 
Uh, I think your own family member, your dear one, while they are facing this is almost like starvation, you enjoy your own meal. How can? Even poor animal, sometimes they got something they share with the other one. So then, uh, that way, not just sort of something moral or something sort of something sacred, not, not that really gives you meaningful life. You're talking about uh, <coughs> and like happy one. That's right. Warm heartedness. Yes, empathy. this is a oh, sense of concern of others' well being. Connect, be, feeling connected to that's others. Right. Yeah. That's right. Speaking of feeling connected to others, we have a number of questions. And other, other one, other word, a lot of problems here. Entire humanity and every single human being uh, do not want problem. But many problem, essentially, our own creation. Why? Too much self-centered attitude and lack of holistic. So we are facing daily life. You see, a lot of problems. Essentially, these problems are like the Syria problem, mm -hmm. uh, many other problems. You see, often news is report. These problems, not created by gun itself, <laughs> not institution itself, but because person who involved these things just you see, think their own self-centered, their own power, their own name like that. So therefore, a lot of problem essentially our own creation. Therefore, now our existing sort of way of thinking, now more or less proving, show us something lacking, something wrong. Mm -hmm. So we have to think, you see, it's a more wider way. Our existing sort of the different institutions, or including United Nations, you see, more of the specific field. And even religious leaders also is thinking their own sort of circle. So that's why sometimes this institution supposed meant for humanity, meant for betterment of people, but sometimes create more problems, right. more divisions. Thank you. <clears throat> I wanted to uh, bring in some uh, questions from our global audience today. Mm. We have a number via Twitter. Uh, Facebook and email. Uh, one, Your Holiness, comes from Greece. It's Constantine and Anon, and they ask, what would you advise the people of Greece and the peoples of Southern Europe today that are experiencing, as they say in their question, a financial crisis, but also an ethical and moral crisis? What would you say to them? What would you advise them? No economic crisis, my knowledge or experience, <laughs> zero, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they have to manage. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but then, if, you see, even with this crisis, some people, you see, take advantage or something, selfish way, then that's quite sad. But in the long run, they will face negative consequences. I think Greek people, generally, I think, uh, there are sort of the serious religious believer there. Uh, so these people, uh, if, if they uh, take these sort of difficulties, whole nation, an individual takes some advantage or an economic field or some other, well, then uh, God will punish. Not good. We should be remain. Uh, and then sometimes ordinary people it's because of the desperate situation, sometimes stealing, sometimes lying, that also should restrain. Sometimes things desperate. Sometimes we do some sort of so immoral actions. So that, I think, uh, when we face with a difficult situation, and we must alert our mind. Now, there is real danger I may... Uh, or city follow some uh, wrong way. That I, I want to share. Otherwise, I don't know. It's a good start. Um, I have another question, Your Holiness. 
from Salome, who comes from the former Soviet Republic of Georgia, who asks about religion and nationalism and says in her question that she's concerned in her country and in her region that these are forces that are becoming more negative than positive. And she wants to know from you, how can religion and nationalism together become a positive force in society? I think for certain sort of purpose, according to certain circumstances, I think like uh, when Polish sort of the freedom movement, I think their religious faith and nationalism and together, it worked. I think gained some positive sort of result. But sometimes, is it too much nationalism, uh, again narrow-minded nationalism, very much sort of opposite thinking about humanity. Just my nation. Uh, so sometimes uh, extreme sort of narrow-minded nationalism is not good. We should think humanity rather than my nation. Than nation. Yeah, you said, I think the uh, European Union, I think quite good. The original sort of spirit, think about uh, several hundred, uh, few hundred sort of European mm -hmm. So the population think they are common interest uh, rather than each different national mm -hmm. interest. No, you uh, said uh, logically national interest also related with the common interest like that. Well, I wanted to ask about that because you said a certain kind of narrow national interest. Do you concede that there is something broader that a citizen of Greece or India or the United States can be patriotic? Mm and love their country, hmm. but not to the detriment of others, that they can join that? Well, that does right. That, yeah. Logically, uh, in order to, 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 to create sort of unified force, you have to take care of each finger. The interest for sort of common sort of also the, uh, unified sort of force does not mean neglect each fingers. If something, something goes wrong, <laughs> then suffer is common sort of uh, say, a force, like that. So when we talk about, as I mentioned earlier, when we talk humanity, first, this is start from individual, then family, then community, then national or nation, then international or global level. See, keeping our mind interest for global humanity, then the step, you see, from your own side, go like that. That's logical. Otherwise, you see, neglect your own sort of prosperity or these things, and then thinking about uh, prosperi mm -hmm. prosperity of the world, it's illogical. But let me, you know, in this question of how we balance the local and the global, I want to take a question from Rim, who works for Radio for Europe, Radio Liberty, and uh, comes from Tatarstan, a Russian republic, part of the Russian Federation. He asks, uh, Your Holiness, based on your experience with Tibet, how does one protect and advance the rights of an ethnic minority under difficult circumstances when the ruling authority is quite severe and quite intolerant? What would you say to the people of such a republic who want integration but want respect for their own cultural, historical, and religious identity. How do you advise them? As far as Tibet problem is concerned, we are not seeking separation, uh, but trying to remain with trying trying to uh, trying to remain within the people of China. You see, we should have a certain sort of legitimate right. Uh, look after our own culture, our own education, based on our own culture or our own language, Tibetan script, these things. Uh, so I think these people, I think like European Union, member of European Union, you see, now even I think the political union, now some people are talking about political union also. Uh, uh, so these, uh, you see, they uh, does not mean, you see, they forget their own sort of right. So, therefore, I think uh, now the Russian Federation theoretically no longer 
authoritarian or centralized. So I think people uh, have opportunity to work, work hard, and education, and not necessarily see, the only polit political sort of slogan, but education and sort of the, what should they, some certain training, and should work hard. And economy, your own area, should work hard. In the meantime, you see, uh, make known your own unique cultural heritage. Uh, these, I think that's the way. And when an ethnic minority wants to protect itself and defend itself, and when they face pressure uh, or intimidation from an authoritarian regime, do you have general sorts of advice based on your experience of what works, what doesn't work, uh, what the healthiest, healthiest path is? It's a difficult situation. I think one positive thing after the Second World War, I think the right of different sort of ethnic groups and their preservation of their own culture, including their own language, uh, according to the concept of uh, right of, I mean, human right, and also right of self-determination. You see, these things, uh, uh, one time, you say I had this meeting, uh, the uh, Queen Mother of England, and the, uh, at that time, her own age, age and 96. So uh, I, uh, I asked, when I had this sort of audience, I asked her, uh, since this is she, almost as the, as the uh, I said, they observe or experience a whole 20th century. So I asked her, the humanity become better or worse or same? Without hesitation, she mentioned better. Reason, when she was young, nobody talked about the human right or importance of human right or importance of uh, self right of self-determination. Nowadays, these things are universal value. I think that's true. The overall, I think, indigenous peoples, sort of, they are right. These things, I think, now, worldwide, well known, they are right. So they have the legitimacy, leg 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 you see, to preserve their own identity, their own culture. So I think, uh, and then, the overall, the, with the disappearance of Berlin Wall, things is much changed, at least the European continent, and including Russia. Uh, sometimes still is some difficulties there, and you need more determination, a little bit more patience, <laughs> and our approach, uh, according to my own experience, must be realistic approach. Sometimes our aim may not achieve easily, then must keep our determination, our willpower, and with little patience. Uh, then there's the Tibetan saying, nine times failure, nine times effort. I think that's important. Uh, uh, patience is not and, easy. And overall, sort of, also, look, world situation, I think, becoming better. This is, this is sort of, sort of my, my conviction. So there's real hope. Well, you know, we, we find in our work here at the Legatum Institute and, and through this uh, uh, publication I mentioned, the Prosperity Index, that the world uh, has improved decade by decade mm. and, and the world is becoming a more prosperous place. But in part, I think, because of the interdependence and because of the technology and because of the communication, People have higher expectations. People have less patience. They understand what they don't have and what they want to get. And that's in material life, but also in spiritual life, too. I mean, with, with progress, it seems to me, are higher expectations and a demand for more. Does that make sense? I think expectation about inner value. Since the inner value 
no limitation. So expectation is very positive force to go further, 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 further. But prosperity in the sense material value, in any case there is limitation. Uh, I think a few decades ago when I was, when one occasion I visited Japan, then Japanese economy go like that. So I expressed uh, uh, through some sort of television interview like that, I express the material value. In any case, one day you reach limitation. Uh, so better prepare your mind. So they exactly, this is not a prediction, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but it truly happened that they eventually you see, stuck their sort of or city economy uh, growth like that. So then later, it's some Japanese friend who told me, you say <laughs> my sort of ass assessment or something, they uh, really, you see, or so they appreciate, or they experienced like that. So I always say material value, material development is concerned. In any case, there is limitation. Even one individual own whole world, uh, then you cannot do you cannot go beyond. Even you try to walk, try to kind of the, uh, possess moon, <laughs> not much value. But desire, greed, still, uh, still may be there. That's uh, the, the material field. There is limitation. The physical thing, limitation. Uh, the spiritual inner value is concerned. No form, no physical. Therefore, the mind's one sort of, because the unique nature is, you see, no physical, so only energy, awareness. So there's sort of vast things can, uh, I say, can remain within our mind. So therefore, mental development is concerned, no limitation. So, uh, should not have contended. Material field, there's limitation, so better to contend, practice of contentment. It, it seems to me, Your Holiness, that, that we're all striving for what you do so well and we struggle with, which is balance. B because, as you said in our symposium this morning, um, we want to create wealth because it can do good things. As you said this morning and you've written in your book, self-interest is a good thing, but it's important to distinguish between, as you put it, wise self-interest or selfishness and foolish self-interest or selfishness. How does one get the balance right? It's a struggle, isn't it? I think with the help of our intelligence, uh, realistic intelligence, and also through our own experience, I think we can learn these things. Uh, so obviously, a human being, social animal. Even those animals, you see, who live together, who survive, depend on the rest of the community. They, they have no religion, no law, no police force, <laughs> no judiciary <laughs> court. But you see, by nature, you see, they work together. So they have no particular sort of training of altruism. But the nature is such. The uh, individual uh, animal, or even like bees, the individual sort of survival depend on the rest of the rest of the mm -hmm. community. So we human being, essentially like that, but sometimes our smart, some smart mind think, oh, no need to others. I can survive. I can do better. <laughs> that alone. arrogant, yes. Alone, yeah. So th that actually against basic nature. So use these was the uh, awareness, then you can develop taking care about other. Mm. Others is basis of your own happy future. So actually taking care of other is the source of your own happiness. K taking care of your own sort of ultimate source of your own happiness, your own successful life. So that's what I usually call wise selfish. Ultimate interest is your own interest. But for your own interest, the best way is taking care of others. 
other foolish selfish is <laughs> taking care of yourself, suppose, but forget the ultimate source of your own successful. Do, do not care. Or worst thing is exploit, bully, telling lie, cheating. Well, it is, uh, as you say, wise uh, selfishness, or, or as we might call it, enlightened self-interest. It's something you write about, that being warm-hearted and giving and being generous is not only important for the person who receives the generosity, mm -hmm. but for the person who gives, Yes, that it transforms. Yes. Your Holiness, I have one last question. This comes via Facebook. It's from London. It's from Samtruk Pasang. He wants to know, it's back to balance, how does one balance the individual's moral principles in a world of very fierce competition, where people work very hard and produce very much, but they want to stay centered? And it's back to the original theme of how to keep values centered in an enlightened way that helps the individual, but also others, I think. How does one think about that? There are some competition that, that could be two, two, two types. One of sense of competition. You see, you also want, you also want to be first. You should not remain behind. That kind of so, so desire. And accordingly, work hard. It's positive sort of sense of competition. Now, another, uh, now here I think that kind of the sense of competition is some kind of, you also consider part of the humanity, part of the community. So community also you see, should, should further sort of develop. I also you see, want to develop and show other, you see, we have the sort of same opportunity, same potential work, through work hard. That kind of sense of competition is good. Another thing is too much self-centered sort of equation. Uh, in order to, you should reach first, they create a problem to other, to obstacle, create ob obstacle, uh, or creates a problem, or their opportunity. Uh, that is the negative, destructive sense of competition. I think while we learning, sense of competition is something very helpful. Without that, you see, you uh, don't care. <laughs> and then you have no progress. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Your Holiness, thank you. We have a symposium to continue downstairs right now. Oh. I want to thank our audience worldwide. I'm Jeff Gebner of the Legatum Institute. Please read uh, the book by His Holiness, Beyond Religion, Ethics for an Entire and Whole World, and if I may say again, our new Prosperity Index to be released next week, Legatum Institute. Please have a look for a holistic view of prosperity around the globe. Your Holiness, a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being with us.